Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our diocesan Advent meditation this evening. Tonight, we'll begin with prayer, have musical offerings offered by Peggy Howe, the organist and choir director at St. John's in Lynchburg. There will be a scripture reading, artwork to reflect on, a reading for us to focus on the friendship of Mary and Elizabeth, and then concluding music and prayer. There will also be times of silence throughout for your own personal reflection. You will be muted during the entire meditation so that you can focus and think about what you hear in these stories and music and prayer. This is being recorded and if you'd like to stop your video, you may do that. I will turn my video off during the meditation as we begin. But now I invite you to slow down, take a deep breath in and exhale, relax and listen and look as we continue our Advent journey. Let us pray. Gracious God, you give us family and friends who share in our joys and on our spiritual journeys. Thank you for the gift of those who love us, support us, hold us in prayer, and walk with us on our earthly pilgrimage. May these spiritual friendships draw us closer to you and the love you share so abundantly. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
A reading from the Gospel of Luke. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God, my savior for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. I invite you now to sit with this stained glass depiction of Elizabeth with Mary. What do you see in this picture? Who was there for you when you were younger and had good news to share? Now I invite you to sit with this different picture of Mary and Elizabeth. And what do you see in this picture?
Who do you share your joy with today? Who do you share your faith with? Now I'd like to share with you part of a short story that Margaret Gunther wrote in her book, Notes from a Sojourner. This comes from the short story entitled, Thank You, Betty for Dan. Margaret Gunther was an Episcopal priest and a professor of spiritual direction and a colleague and a friend. Thank you, Betty, for Dan. Time looks different from the perspective of the eighth decade. While this vantage point doesn't quite rival that of God, of whom we sing, a thousand ages in thy sight are like an evening gone. 30 or 40 years doesn't seem like much anymore. When I am with my young female colleagues and friends, I have to keep reminding myself that they take for granted what still seems startling new for me. I have no biological sisters, but I rejoice in the friendship and sisterhood of women. There is an ease in our conversation that never would have been possible at those highly structured dinner parties of the 1960s. We're not trying to impress each other. We're not competing with each other. Maybe we're recovering some vestige of tribal bonding lost long, long ago when we became too civilized. We still talk about cooking and children. We are still interested in clothes and like to admire each other. But we also talk about hopes and fears life and death. We talk about men individually and generically, and we talk about God, God the father, God the mother, God the lover, and God the inexplicably other. My sisters are a motley crew ranging from 30 something to 90 something year olds. Most of them don't know each other. I enjoy the fantasy of getting them all together someday for an extended slumber party. The warm hearted, lively group of Baptist women I know from Mississippi who introduced me to weaving. My Roman Catholic Benedictine sisters from Kansas. The dedicated South African women I know who run a center to protect their sisters from violence my poet friend, my Dominican friend, Kathleen, who has an uncanny way of knowing when I need her prayers. Mary Louise, who's been my sister-in-law for more than half a century. And my colleague who's young enough to be my daughter, but treats me like a buddy. The list could go on and on. We would rejoice in one another's presence and laugh a lot and no doubt shed some tears. We would be bound together in the sisterly friendship first modeled by Mary and Elizabeth in Luke's gospel. Luke doesn't say, but I always picture Mary alone when Gabriel came to her and told her not to be afraid, that the Holy Spirit would come upon her 
that the Most High would overshadow her and that she would become the mother of the Holy Child. The encounter ends with a short little sentence I had overlooked for decades. The angel departed from her. Mary is left alone with an awesome, terrible, joyous secret, and she hastens to seek out a trusted friend. Mary and Elizabeth are different in age, circumstances of life, and perhaps in how they felt about themselves. Yet they are united in their friendship, their womanhood, and their fruitfulness. They are both expecting, to use the euphemism of my childhood, they are both the bearers of new life. Luke tells us that Mary remained for three months and then returned to her home. What did they talk about during those 90 mornings, middays, and evenings? Did they take turns reassuring one another in times of fatigue, morning sickness, or just plain panic? Did they talk about the men in their lives? worry together about Zechariah's speechlessness and ponder what to say to Joseph when the crucial conversation could be postponed no longer. Maybe they spent hours together sitting, sewing, or resting in silence. Maybe they laughed together at Elizabeth's baby's vigorous leaps that knocked her handiwork off her lap. Maybe Elizabeth listened as Mary told and retold the story of her angelic visitor. Two very different women, they were able to talk about what really mattered to, to them. Together, they looked at their own wondrous experience and realized their strength. The mighty one had done great things for them and holy is God's name. They could afford to be humble and to accept the role of handmaids and servants. They knew who indeed they were. Thank you, Betty, for Dan, for helping me begin to know who I am. Thank you even more, Mary and Elizabeth. You show us what the feminine mystique is really all about.
Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and with great might come among us. Because we are sorely hindered by our sins, let your bountiful grace and mercy speedily help and deliver us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us this evening. Go in peace and good night.